Chandra, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about your research into social TV. So I guess my first question for you is, could you talk to us a little bit about what is social TV and what kind of got you interested in researching it? Sure. So um, I guess broadly speaking, social TV is the integration of social media and TV programming. Um, and this happens in a variety of ways. So people um, contribute somewhat organically uh, on social networking sites like Twitter and Facebook. And more recently, there are a number of social TV applications that have been developed by um, a number of businesses that have been quite successful that allow people to basically show how big of a fan they are of different TV shows. So they do things like check into shows and communicate with one another. And even social TV applications have been developed by networks themselves. So networks, um, in the US at least, have ways for their viewers to interact with one another on their websites, and in fact are trying to drive them to their own websites to do just that. Now, in, for TV in particular, I mean, either TV networks or TV avatars, I mean, what do you think it is that's kind of driving them to be interested in people on social media talking about their shows? Right, so that's a great question. So I think, you know, People like to talk about television, and both networks and advertisers um, only recently, I would say in the past three and a half years, noticed this, right? So people are doing this at large scale. And so whenever advertisers <laughs> notice that people are doing um, things at large scale, they get very interested, right? And so then it begs the question, sort of how can we use the fact that people are doing that to one, you know, better engage with viewers and customers or potential customers anyway. Um, and then also hopefully make the viewer experience a little bit more meaningful. So the networks are more interested in making the viewer um, experience more meaningful so that, that will in turn sort of drive more viewers, right? Um, but advertisers are really interested in understanding sort of what this interaction means for them with respect to selling their products. Mm -hmm. And now you did a number of different studies looking at various aspects of this. So could you tell us a little bit about some of the studies and what you've been what you've looked at and kind of how you've analyzed it, some of the different approaches you've taken? Sure. So um, We've run a number of studies um, now, some in the preliminary phase, but two I think that are most notable are one where we've studied the popular reality singing TV show, The Voice, um, and so the other is the Super Bowl. So on the one hand, we're interested in following a TV show that um, has used social media as part of their programming. and. We want to better understand what that means with respect to viewer engagement. And on the other hand, we followed TV advertisers during major national events, including the Super Bowl. So let's t take the, the Voice. So The Voice, as part of their programming, does a number of things to engage um, viewers on social media. So one thing that they do is they simply put um, a hashtag on, on the show, right? So pound the voice is used as um, an identifier for the topic, the voice. Additionally, they put specific tweets on the screen that are both generated by users, so they're contributed um, by users, and also contributed by people that are on the show. And so additionally, they um, have what's called a social media room. So this was, I don't know of any other shows uh, that were doing this, at least when they did it the first time. And during the social media room, um, they have an MC that basically um, interacts with both the contestants on the show and the viewers in the audience. And so using all of these different strategies, they've been able to generate quite a bit of word of mouth on social media. And so we have um, tried to understand what has triggered the most word of mouth what seems to be working for the show, and what seems to be less effective. And so we found a number of things. One, I think most importantly, that actually providing these triggers via either um, tweet hashtags or specific tweets leads to more engagement. Um, and also, we find that the content, in terms of the diversity of the content, changes when these triggers are, are posted on the show versus when they're not. Mm -hmm. And maybe obviously, we find that there's a different response to the social media triggers when um, the show is aired for the second time. So for example, when it's aired on the West Coast after it has already been aired on so the East Coast. So when it's live versus exactly. not live. Exactly. <laughs> 
And I know you've also done, you mentioned, also mentioned a study about the Super Bowl. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So with the Super Bowl, we um, we knew in advance, luckily, who was going to be advertising on the Super Bowl. And so we followed those advertisers on Twitter and on Facebook, and we're able to see um, both what they were contributing during the Super Bowl and also how viewers were talking about the brands during the Super Bowl. And so the remarkable thing is that we can see in real time how the users are responding to specific triggers again. And so in this case, it's both content that's happening um, during the show, so where people are firms are advertising, but also some of the um, advertisers were doing things like playing social media games, right? And so when they did, we found that the advertisers that actually included some kind of social media content, but specifically the, um, the games in the social media content, their buzz, if you will, so the amount of, um, or the number of tweets that people were contributed online were not only greater in number, but also more sustained over the, the Super Bowl, which suggests that actually incorporating some kind of social media and content actually leads to more engagement and also more sustained engagement. And if you believe that that's important, which I think most advertisers do, then they can think about sort of how to incorporate more social media content into their advertisements. Now, when you say social media game, can you give an example of that? Um, so, so they varied. Um, so one example um, was happening happened actually before the the Super Bowl. So Chevy had a competition where they asked uh, viewers to contribute commercials, um, and so one of the commercials that was shown during the Super Bowl was a commercial contributed by a user. So they had people submitting these these commercials, and as a result, people were interested in who won, right? So that's one example. Um, so another example is something that uh, Coca-Cola did. They had polar bears responding to the advertisement, uh, responding to the Super Bowl in real time. So um, based on what was happening during the Super Bowl, the commercials were adapting to that, and, and users were contributing content as a result. Now, you had mentioned earlier to me that, like, you and your and your research team had gotten pretty exacting detail, gone through these shows. I mean, not just watching them once, but I mean, can you talk a little bit about some of the methods that you used in order to sort of track this and how exacting you had to get in terms of watching it and also tracking what was going on on Twitter or Facebook? Or right. Great. So in order to do the research that we're doing, we were, we're basically pulling data from a number of sources. So we are looking at Twitter and Facebook response, obviously, because um, we talked a lot about that. But in addition, we're actually recording the shows, and in order to later look at response to specific triggers, we actually need to timestamp those triggers. So we go back through the shows and note exactly when certain events happen so that we can see how that directly ties to the social media response. And what's nice about The Voice, in addition to having the Twitter and Facebook data, the content of the show that's tagged. Um, we also have sales data. So um, part of the voice, well, how people voted um, in part was by buying songs on iTunes. And so we were able to look at the sales rank of the iTunes songs associated with the voice over time as the season was going on. And so because we were able to calculate to collect that data, we've been able to link the buzz to sales. And so there are huge questions out there, not just um, in relationship to TV, but for social media in general around whether buzz actually leads to sales or in the context of TV, does it really lead to more viewers? And so um, it's been really nice to have all of these data because we've been able to link buzz directly to sales, at least in this case of The Voice. And where do you see the research going from here? I mean, what are kind of your goals for the future in terms of taking this to the next step? So we have a lot of, we have a lot of goals. So in addition to the specific case studies that we're working on, we're actually working on a number of projects that look at social TV in general. So for example, we're building a social TV recommendation engine that takes advantage of the fact that people are contributing this content about shows, and we use it to calculate the similarity between shows to make better recommendations about 
TV shows. In addition, um, we're studying the relationship between how popular a show is um, using Nielsen ratings, right? So in terms of how many viewers there actually are for a show and how social a TV show is. So um, other data that we've been able to get are check-ins on some of these social TV apps that viewers are making in public on Twitter, for example, and we can measure how social a show is and we're relating. So those are things that we're already doing. In the future, I guess what is most exciting I think is one, doing what you're talking about. So coming up with some better analytics for social TV and social media in general to begin to link that to some business value. Um, and then I think for me, what's really nice to see um, are people are now doing social TV for good. So one example of that is um, there was this telethon that was, um, I guess it's been a couple of weeks ago now, maybe a month, where um, it was called Stand Up for Cancer. And so um, they had celebrities. It was it was kind of a new age telethon, if you will, where celebrities were talking about cancer. And um, during the broadcast, they were, of course, trying to get people to donate for cancer research. But they were interacting with viewers on the show. In addition, when, as people were donating, they were talking about that on social media and also saying that they stood up for a specific person. So, it, you know, it was one example where a television show was actually trying to not even incentivize, but motivating people to talk about this particular event and donating to an, a special cause um, on social media. And so there are other examples like that. So PBS just, really, just recently um, had a broadcast. Uh, the show was called Half the Sky, and it talked about um, oppression of, of women, right? It was really the subject of, of the broadcast. And they partnered with one of these social TV apps that I've been talking about, GetGlue. And with GetGlue, they had the GetGlue um, app users, uh, they gave them special badges for w watching both episodes. So it was a two-part program. And they, they partnered with the social TV app to get people to view and talk about the show. And I think, you know, seeing these nice examples where not only, you know, is there the advertising story, of course, where people are, you know, trying to come up with analytics to better understand what this means for products and brands, but also, you know, it really just shows how important it is to think about the fact that regardless of if you um, develop content to to, to promote word of mouth on social media or not and TV shows that people are going to do it. And so why not, especially in the case of you know these good causes, try to think about the best ways to promote that word of mouth so that you build more awareness even when people are not watching the television show. So I think that that's particularly exciting for me. And I guess down the road, we've been talking with um, uh, a couple of, of TV networks about running, and not in this country, by the way, but, <laughs> but running um, some experiments. So as we begin to better understand what seems to be driving um, you know, sustained word of mouth and, and more engagement using these TV triggers, we want to begin to experiment with different messages to see whether we can actually um, figure out exactly what is causing the response. And I'll try to kind of go on, on with that. I mean, in terms of this research, I mean, what do you think if I'm a business, if I'm a network or an advertiser, how does it help me, I mean, to be able to use this sort of thing when I'm trying to create a social media strategy or figure out maybe how social media fits into my overall strategy? Right. So I think, um, so I think from the network perspective, they have to be thinking about a number of things, right? So networks, um, networks make money in part from advertisers. And so for them, they want to have a lot of viewers of their shows, right? And so it's kind of maybe an obvious thing to think about how um, incorporating social media content will not only lead to buzz, but also to more viewers. So, you know, hopefully the results of our work will better inform networks that are trying to incorporate social TV content. Um, I guess additionally, advertising, because it's a huge part of how networks make money is changing, right? So consumer behavior is changing and, you know, 
if people are glued to their computer or their phone or even their tablet when they are watching television, it kind of changes how they're interacting potentially with advertisement. And so I think networks, and they know this, um, are going to have to pay attention to that fact and as a result come up with new um, advertising models that take advantage of this. And that's not a bad thing because potentially what will happen is because people are contributing content and thus revealing more information about themselves and their preferences, you might be able to do better targeted advertising to consumers and, and therefore more effective advertising to consumers that are watching TV. Right. So potentially turning the fact that people's attention is divided and they might be able to fast forward past the ads from kind of a negative into maybe a positive, like figuring out how to leverage what people are doing. Right into actually letting them know about a product. Right, and then even better, I mean, the holy grail, of course, is to drive people to buy things, right? I mean, so it, you can't buy, at least today, you can't buy anything by watching television alone. But if you're online or on your phone, you can sort of click something and, and purchase and be driven directly to a website or something like that. And so finally, could you tell me a little bit about, I mean, what this research means, what are the implications for consumers? So first of all, I think, you know, networks care about viewer engagement, right? And so, you know, on the one hand, you're seeing networks respond to the fact that people are contributing in public for free um, by creating new ways to enhance the viewer experience. So I think, you know, viewers will benefit because there'll be new applications and new ways to engage with TV shows and even TV show celebrities. Um, I think from, from some of our work, what's nice too, is that um, we can begin to use the content that viewers are contributing to help them learn about new content, right? So, you know, in some way, we hope to give back to viewers, um, you know, some insights into, you know, how TV shows are related and what they may like. And we can only do that because they're contributing this content. So I think users um, and viewers stand to benefit tremendously from the insights that business analytics will give us. Um, you know, perhaps they're not as happy about the advertising angle, but you know, that's positive too, perhaps, because they'll get more targeted advertising, right? And so the advertising, at least, if you're going to have to watch it anyway, will be more relevant. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Sure. Thank you.